When police at LA's Lakewood Sheriff Department had trouble solving a violent carjacking case, they took a sketch artist drawing of the suspect and ran it through a facial recognition system. The software found a match in less than two minutes. Police brought the suspect in and witnesses identified him in a lineup. The three-week-old case was finally solved. A detective told one reporter this could be as big as fingerprints. That happened in 1997. Facial recognition technology, or FRT, has been around longer than the internet, and it's just part of the $42 billion biometric security industry expanding across the planet. But here in America, privacy advocates say laws that regulate this tech haven't kept up with the industry. Well, while functionally democracy doesn't create the surveillance infrastructure to spy on its citizens. This is Jeremy Scott, an attorney with the Electronic Privacy Information Center. He also runs Epic's project on surveillance oversight. And that's what kind of facial recognition um, allows, even if it's not being used specifically for that right now, when you create the infrastructure, particularly in the situation like it is now with the lack of overarching federal regulation to ensure that it's not abused or it's not expanded in ways that would undermine our democracy. Uh, that, is, that is problematic. Privacy isn't mentioned specifically in any of the U.S. government's founding documents, like the Constitution. But a famous article by attorneys Louis Brandeis and Samuel Warren, published in 1890, argued people have a right to privacy. But there are limits to how much privacy you have in public, where you're never really alone. Everything you do in public can be easily recorded. Um, and collected and used and, and not only at that time, but as we do at a later date. Technology improves quickly, but laws don't. As long as the law doesn't adequately catch up to regulate these and these technologies, there'll always be that kind of gray area of advancing surveillance technology and lack of protections for people. A 2020 GAO report found 18 federal agencies used facial recognition tech. Six federal agencies have contracts with commercial FRT companies. And a 2021 BuzzFeed report found more than 1,800 public agencies across the U.S. used FRT between 2018 and 2020. And some agencies didn't know their employees even used it. Oregon Senator Ron Wyden responded to that report saying, Americans shouldn't have to rely on BuzzFeed to learn their local law enforcement agencies were using flawed facial recognition technology. But what does he mean by flawed? Obviously, there's a racial bias concern uh, because the technology has been shown to disproportionately impact and wrongly identify people of color. Um, particularly black males. He's talking about situations like this one. A man in Georgia, pulled over by police, was arrested on a theft warrant out of Louisiana after a department's facial recognition tools matched him with a robbery suspect. He says he told police he'd never been to Louisiana and hadn't stolen anything. Police eventually let him go after realizing he had a mole on his face, but the suspect did not. The suspect was also roughly 40 pounds heavier than the man police arrested. After holding him in jail for the week of Thanksgiving, they let him go. The department didn't respond to the paper's requests for more information. The process described in his story is different from what happened back in 97, when California detectives used FRT to find that carjacking suspect, they had witnesses ID him in a lineup, making sure to verify his identity beyond what the computer said. There's always this promise of new technology to help police and bring down crime. You know, those resources, money being put toward technology versus kind of the root causes of the issue, you know, where we need better schools and better education, better mental health programs, and et cetera. Those are the things that actually in the, in the long run drive down crime, not the ability of police to conduct more surveillance. Today, some businesses use FRT to prevent people from even getting in the building. In a highly publicized case out of New York, the owner of MSG Entertainment, which owns Madison Square Garden and Radio City Music Hall, blacklisted all attorneys working at law firms that are currently suing his company. His security team took headshot photos of lawyers from their law firm's web pages and put them in a facial recognition system. So if they show up for a musical or a ball game, the security team can block them from coming in. In a public statement, a spokesperson for MSG Entertainment said, while we understand this policy is disappointing to some, we cannot ignore the fact that litigation creates an inherently adverse environment. All impacted attorneys were notified of the policy. You can imagine where, uh, you know, politicians and legislators might have uh, you know, sponsored a law or supported a law that 
you know, a certain business didn't like, and so they deny services or entry into their property to those legislators. And you could see how that might affect people's behavior if getting on the wrong side of a particular corporation means you will be denied their servers or access to their property. That will impact the way you act. In a legal sense, your face isn't private data. But when your face is connected to other data points like your name and location, that can feel less like a public safety need and more like surveillance. It really undermines our constitutionally protected freedoms, particularly the, the First Amendment, uh, the, the right to speech and association and religion and expression, etc., all undermined by you know constant government surveillance. We don't feel free to express our true opinions or you know participate in maybe protests against you know government actions because we know we could be surveilled and identified. And, uh, there's always that fear that the government will bring its resources to bear against people.